Hi all, uh, Scott Trent here. Uh, this is our introduction uh, video for art appreciation this summer class. Uh, it's Art Appreciation 1301. And this class will be a five week class. Um, it's completely online. And I wanna just give go through a few of the details for you to get you started. Uh, you should be able to find everything that you need, whether it's in the syllabus, or the announcements uh, or the modules. So when you get in Canvas, look on the left side of the column and you have uh, the different tabs that you need. There's the mail, if you need to email me, that's one way to reach me. Um, there's a syllabus over there, if you need a syllabus, which has my contact information in it. And uh, you have uh, assignments, quizzes, the grade book, everything's right over there. So that's where you look and click to uh, navigate through the course. Now within the assignments and also at different announcements I have links to lectures so once again this is an asynchronous course it's completely online and everything you should want or need you can find through the Canvas uh, platform. Uh, this it's, it's self-paced but there are a couple things that kind of contradict with that so for instance it's self-paced but there's deadlines. Uh, each assignment has a deadline. And I do that to help facilitate the course for you. Also, so I'm not grading everything in the last couple days of the class. Uh, the deadlines are hard deadlines. If you miss them, that's it. You can't turn in any, the work after that. Um, and usually they're uh, the next day that they're due. Once again, uh, being a five week course, this is a 16 week course that's crammed down into five weeks. There's a lot of work, there's a lot of assignments. Um, I don't have that much reading for this class, but you do have a lot of stuff to do. And if you fall behind, it makes it really tough. If you fall behind, it makes it really tough on me too, because I have to stay up with uh, uh, grading you guys. So usually, I might grade <clears throat> once or twice a week, um, so I stay pretty current. But there might be a couple days that go by that uh, I have not graded your work that's been submitted, but be assured I will get on it. Now, at the same time I say that, uh, I'm always telling you guys, if you feel like um, I've missed something, I haven't graded, feel free to email me and say, hey Scott, you know what's going on? Uh, this hasn't been graded yet. And I'll send back some snarky responses like, I'm on it, I'll get it, whatever. But uh, I do, there's sometimes the grade book is quirky and I need your help to make sure that I'm getting your work and I'm on top of it and I don't miss anything. So you can always feel comfortable contacting me, emailing me and letting me know uh, if there's something that I've overlooked. So the last day of this class is August 10th. Uh, that last week, uh, August 9th and 10th, the final exam is due on that Monday, and then uh, there is a, a final assessment, which is due the following day, where I, once again, just ask you to go through and make sure that everything's graded. I have a column in the grade book where it's called final grade, because you can't trust the Canvas grade book. Uh, a lot of times they'll give you a percentage, and I'm not even really sure what it's tallying. And that's not always an accurate reflection of what your grade is. So uh, towards the end, I will fill in that final grade column so that you can see wh where you are in the class and make sure that you know that uh, maybe uh, you're not where you want to be or uh, you're not going to get the grade that you think you're going to get. And we can talk about it. maybe I've missed something. Uh, there's no extra credit for the class. You've got plenty of work, so I don't need to add extra work. Uh, and also, uh, you, um, my goal is that the grade reflects your work. So depending on what you've done and uh, how much attention you've given and all that kind of stuff, that's what the grade should reflect. So there really shouldn't be a discussion about grades, but that doesn't mean that there aren't. Uh, and feel free to have that conversation with me because you, you might not know whether you're that person that should be having the conversation about your grades. So, um, attendance. Uh, so I will take that five times during the course. You're expected to show up, uh, log into Canvas at least once a week. And if you're not, I'll mark you absent because, uh, once again, that's another thing to kind of keep you accountable to the class. Um, 
Oh, the uh, so the entire course is available right now. Uh, if you're watching this, then you've already been on Canvas and you've already looked through the course and you will see that everything including the final exam is available today. And you could finish the class in the next couple of days if you wanted to and I have no problem with that. Uh, so it's self-paced from that direction, uh, but there are deadlines if you are falling behind and, and you're missing uh, uh, assignments that uh, turn them in on time. Uh, I have to mention that this is not a studio class. There's a couple assignments that I give you where you are asked to recreate a work of art. So draw the Mona Lisa or find a classic work of art and um, redraw it. And you can use crayon, pencil, pen, marker, finger paint. I don't care what you use. I'm not a, I, I couldn't draw a stick figure, so I'm not grading you based on your quality, your artistic ability and quality of your art. Um, I do this because it actually uh, gets you to think differently. It uses a different part of your brain where um, you're looking at the work differently than if you were just listening to me lecture about it. And I'm hoping that makes you look at it closer. And if you're trying to recreate something, uh, that looks like that work, then you're going to pull on a different part of your brain and look at it a lot closer than, than you otherwise would. So once again, it's not a studio class, but I do ask you to draw or recreate art, and I'm open to anything you do, and your grade doesn't, it just depends that you answer the questions and do what I ask you, not the quality of your art. I, I want to be very clear about that. So um, there, some of the, you have quizzes, you have uh, writing assignments, you have exercises, and you have uh, one class discussion. In the class discussion, there'll be three entries, your initial post and then comment on two fellow students. And each of those posts need to be 150 words at the very least to get full credit. So that's just an arbitrary number, but uh, I, uh, do that because as an online course, my challenge is to find ways for you to interact with the class and participate fully. And so one, it has you interacting with other students. The 150 words gives me some indication that you put some thought into it. A lot of times uh, students will just give a yeah, no, sure, I agree with that, you know, simple answers. And I'm not seeing the level of uh, attention and uh, consideration research uh, that is required to have to stretch out that answer and add details that otherwise you would put in there. So 150 words get the maximum point. There's a gallery visit exercise. Uh, in this, the gallery visit, normally uh, the normal class that meets 16 weeks is required to attend a gallery or a museum. And uh, then there's questions that they answer about it. For this class and as we're coming out of the pandemic, um, we're still virtual. And so you can virtually uh, visit a museum or gallery. And um, so one of the questions asks you to upload a selfie of you visiting the gallery. So that would be you next to your computer screen with the gallery to show me where you went. And I believe in the announcements I have uh, a link that shows sample students viewing art if you want to see what my expectations are. Uh, so look in announcements, scroll down. Just like all the assignments and the exercises and quizzes are available uh, right now, uh, the announcements, I don't post those on any particular day or in sequence. They're all available today. So all the way from welcome, you know, watch this video, to, hey, you'll need this link, to this is where you can find the workbook, uh, to comments on the gallery visit, all the, or all the things that might be in there, they're in there today. So scroll through those to see if you can find things that you need that um, as, as a resource. Um, as far as grading, the best way to see what's, there's a couple ways to see what's required for this course. One is go to the syllabus. All the assignments are listed. Go to the assignments. All the assignments are listed. Go to the quizzes. All the quizzes are listed. Um, go to announcements 
And in there, there's a course schedule, which is really just a copy of the syllabus. You can see all the courses listed. And then finally, and probably the best thing to do, is go to the grade book and look at all the grades that are expected to be completed by the end of this course. And you can see the different assignments in there. And you can even click at the top of the grade book to go see that particular assignment. Um, but there should be 21 assignments. When I say assignments, I mean exercises, quizzes, lectures, class discussions. should be 21. And the way that you get the grade for this class is so you have the potential. Each one of those assignments is worth 100 points. And so you would take 21 times 100, 2100. And, uh, multi and divide that by 21 to figure out what your grade is. So um, that's the way you, that's the way I'll figure your grade and that's the way you should figure it if you want an uh, idea of what your grade is in the class. The, um, the textbook for this class is listed in the syllabus. It's uh, recommended. It's endorsed by the department, Collin College, uh, fine arts department they really think this is a good book and i agree with them it's an excellent textbook um, now the thing that i know is any edition textbook art textbook is going to say basically the same thing so you don't necessarily have to have that edition matter of fact you don't even have to have that year you could find an art book that's five years old that's going to have the same merit you could do one 10 years old that's going to have the same information that we need for uh, the content of this course. I used to uh, bring a check the day before my classes would start, go to Amazon and see if I could find a textbook for two cents, you know, two pennies that uh, they students could get instead of buying a new one. So I'm always uh, thinking about the money and making it where you guys don't have to spend the money if you don't need to. Uh, textbook is a great resource. It has all the information that you can trust, um, but it's it's not necessarily necessary. Uh, there's other ways to do research, online research, which most people do. That doesn't mean they do it well. Uh, if you're going to use Wikipedia, which is awesome, uh, it's an amazing resource, but then you need to go check four other sources to make sure that the information you got off Wikipedia is accurate. Uh, uh, Google is not a source that you cite. Google is a, a navigation tool to get to the source that you would cite if you were going to do research on the internet. Um, but uh, let's see what's with that. Oh, so the textbook, it's listed in the syllabus if you want to get it. You won't need to get it uh, to pass the class or even make an A in the class. There's other ways that you can get that information. One other thing, one resource that's very helpful that I would strongly recommend is uh, a workbook that I've created for the class. And there's links in the announcements, basically in the announcements, I believe also in the syllabus, uh, where you can go and find this uh, uh, workbook. It's a PDF, it's free, it's simply a link to that file, to that PDF. And you can download it, you can copy it, or you can just open it when you need it. But it, uh, all my lectures, I lecture from that workbook. Uh, matter of fact, the different assignments are within the workbook. Uh, it has everything that you need. So that's probably the most valuable resource that you have for this class is that workbook and the links you can find in the announcements. Once again, the way that uh, you use this you navigate this course is you go to Canvas and click on this particular course. I think it's 024, 1301.024. And, um, and then there's different places that you go to find the information you need. So I would probably go through modules and then it's broken up into five weeks and all the assignments and what's expected for that week are listed under module one, which is week one. And there's five modules, five weeks. And uh, uh, you can also go to announcements. Announcements might have valuable information that gives you something in addition to what the modules has. It has the links that you need. Uh, it has some of the lectures, links to the lectures which also you can find in the modules underneath the different assignments. 
Uh, the grade book has the different assignments, all the 21 assignments that are due for this class. If you want to go that direction and link, to, go back to those assignments so that you can see them through the link. And finally, there's the syllabus. There's the concourse syllabus, which the link is in the left-hand column. Uh, there's a syllabus in the announcements. And then I believe there's a, a syllabus just in Canvas by itself. So, and it has listed all the classes and uh, when they're due and, and all that kind of thing. So um, there's multiple ways to navigate through this course. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's four of them. It, some of your assignments are uh, writing assignments. And um, basically the writing assignments are my, my uh, way to get you guys to do some research work to go out and get some of the information beyond uh, my lectures um, or what you're finding in the exercises. And so there's five writing assignments. There's different topics for them, um, like what is art or sculpture or performance uh, art, what is that? And I ask you uh, four or five questions about that topic. And my expectation is that you go out and research uh, that subject, answer those questions, generally describe it. So for instance, there's a, you define what the topic is, uh, you give examples of it, you give example of an artist, uh, some of them you describe the tools that are used with that particular uh, topic, that particular art, some of the challenges. Uh, so basically it just has you thinking about these different areas of art and answering the question around, but I expect you to research. And I also have the 150 word uh, expectations on these two because once again, it's my way to gauge uh, whether you're putting any thought into this and how much thought, and that's uh, how, I, how I grade your work. Um, the links to the lectures, once again, are in the modules or the announcements. You might have to look around for them if you can't find them. Email me and say, hey, Scott, what's the deal? I can't find this, and I'll, I'll make sure that either it's in the announcement or I'll get back to you directly, uh, but I will make sure that that is uh, that you you got to find those links because that's the big part of the class. So um, let me look at a couple things that I uh, want to make sure and cover with you. Um, So once again, everything should be, I've been doing this class for years. Uh, actually, I guess I'm going, I'm on nine years that I've been teaching art appreciation. I'm passionate about the subject. I'm a metal sculptor myself. Uh, and so I come to it as an artist, but I also come to it always exploring like, what is the point of all this? What's the point of art? Why should you uh, make it important? Why is it something you should care about? And I like answering that question. I like exploring that question with students uh, because it's a good question and it's one that's not easy to answer but if we're thinking about it and exploring it then we're all getting better because of it and that's that's the whole point of this class. It's a drive-by of art and it's a way for you to look at art and understand what you're seeing and if you develop some appreciation for it, fantastic. Uh, if you don't, it's no big deal but at least you got exposed to uh, this uh, creative, artistic world that I believe is really uh, integral to uh, a cultured society, uh, to uh, us being intelligent people and being able to think and reason and uh, have critical ideas. So, once again, I, I think it's very important. I came to this art appreciation class, as, once again, as a metal sculptor, as an artist, uh, but I received my PhD in emerging media and communication, so I actually just feel like art is a form of expression and communication. And one of the exercises that you have is exploring visual literacy because uh, what the artist does with when they create a work of art and express themselves through images or objects or symbols or metaphors, uh, that's a literacy in itself. And it translates 
outside of just fine arts. So as far as uh, logos or branding, um, even advertising or marketing are things that pull on this visual literacy when it's uh, speaking to people and giving them insights into who the company is or who the CEO is or you know what the message is. And it's done in a very efficient way by using images and symbols and metaphors. And that's where it's, when I talk about being a literacy, that's why it's so important. Because as we have more and more data and information thrown at us, uh, we've got to find efficient ways to process that information and utilize it so that then we can come, become better and, and understand what's coming at us. Uh, so in week, um, the second week actually, there's a visual literacy exercise, which I really uh, am excited about. I like, uh, and hopefully <clears throat> the lecture that I have surrounding that will add to what I just said and give you, uh, make sure you understand uh, what, that, what that's about. I think that that's all I need to cover as far as the class. Uh, make sure and look at the modules, look at the syllabus so you can see what the expectations are. Uh, so you can make sure that you're going to be able to do all the work uh, before you know we're done and uh, knock this out. If you have any questions, email is the best way to reach me. Uh, I have, uh, I think I just have my uh, school email address on here, which is great. That actually goes to my personal email. Sometimes I'll uh, respond. Uh, either through my personal email or the school. Whenever it's official business, we need to go through the school email. But sometimes I'll just give a quick response where it's not anything that needs to be encrypted or secure or private or whatever. And so uh, you can use less uh, official um, uh, email for that. So, um, and then if we need to, we can always jump on uh, Zoom. Uh, for uh, if you need to talk to me or a conference or anything like that or uh, you know we can even set up a phone call I think my preference is zoom so if you need to contact or talk to me and I'm available Monday through Friday I mean my schedule is flexible I can be available almost any time but my preference is Monday through Friday uh, between 9 and 11 30 but uh, you know once again I can be flexible to your schedule so that's art appreciation this is the introduction. I'm excited to see you guys online. Um, last day, just the random thing. I will sign off as Dr. Trent uh, in my emails and announcements just because it's hard to keep any level of formality in an online course like this. Uh, but I always ask people to just call me Scott uh, if they are talking to me or you know if you feel comfortable with that. If you don't, then the formal way that you would contact me is Dr. Trent. So, um, but at this point online, it really doesn't matter. You can just say, hey, you, or just send me something and it'll, what needs to happen will happen. So, have any questions, be sure and contact me. Otherwise, I uh, look forward to spending the next five weeks with you talking about art and, uh, and seeing your work uh, as far as the art appreciation class. And uh, we should have a good time. So, let me know if you need anything. And I will see you guys online.